Hello, how's it going? I wanted to make a quick video to direct you to another video, which is, I guess you could call it a documentary because it's about an hour long. And it was made by a man from Russia. And some of you might want to click the link that has the subtitles. I'll link that as well because his accent is kind of heavy. Um, but it's a really, really great video and I'm going to give you kind of a condensed version of what he's putting forth and it's an idea and some of you may think this is woo woo and out there and crazy and he does use the term flat earth in the title of his video so if you can just not get triggered and put those two words aside and listen to what he's saying I think you might find some of this really fascinating so basically what this guy is proposing is that there are actually no forests on this earth now obviously we see trees and what we call forests, but what he is saying is that those are just tiny, tiny little shrubs compared to what used to exist, the kind of trees that used to exist on this earth. Not only trees made out of wood, but trees made from silicone and crystals. And I'm sure everyone's got their, uh, you know, their trigoritis working in overtime right now because I said crystals. Um, but let's just look at some images, okay? So he's saying also, these forests that we know of today, there are no forests that are older than 200 years old. So let's take a look at these mesas, right? We're, we're told that they are mesas. They get the term mesa from the Spanish word for table because they're flat like a table. Now, they tell us that these are formed by volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, cataclysms, erosion, these things. But let's take a look at the petrified forest. We're also told that these crystal, crystallized logs were formed from the same things, erosion and volcanic eruption. How is that possible? Can someone please explain to me how magma, water, or wind can turn wood into crystals. I don't think it happened. And if you look at the petrified forest, it looks as if these logs or maybe branches were completely chopped. Back to the mesas, okay? He's putting forth that these used to be giant mile high trees that were made from silicone. Now, if you look at the outside of these mesas, or really what he's saying is a tree stump, you'll see perfect hexagonal pillars basically surrounding the entire tree stump or what used to be the stalk of the tree. Now how would magma, just dripping magma in a chaotic uh, volcanic eruption form absolute perfect hexagonal pillars? We look at at nature, and it's, it's so perfect in its design, you look at a snowflake, right? There's no two that are the same, but they're all hexagons. We look at uh, bees, right? When they're building their honeycomb, they use hexagons because it's the most efficient use of wax, and it's the most efficient storage capacity you can get anywhere. It's, it's perfect, so they do this for a reason. I don't think some random event would somehow create such perfect symmetry with these hexagons on these mesas. Looking back to some of the lore about Hyperboreans and even our, you know, our lore about Yggdrasil, the world tree, there's something here, guys. And if you look at some of the images he uses in this documentary, it really truly looks like these used to be huge trees and that maybe we were way bigger. Maybe we weren't. I, I don't know. And what were these trees, these silicone trees, what were they used for? What was their purpose? I mean, I don't know. I think maybe they could have been used to generate energy for this world. Why were they cut down? How were they cut down? Were they knocked down? I mean, some of these things are answered in the documentary that I'll link, um, you know, his ideas of why and how and where and when. Um, but he he's saying that our timeline of history that we've been told is complete BS, which I, I think we all are starting to scratch the surface on that. Um, but if you think about it, 200 years old, these forests are only 200 years old. It's really interesting. I mean, we still have modern examples of these huge trees, obviously not as big as the trees that he is 
saying might have existed. But look at the sequoias in, uh, you know, I think it's Yosemite National Forest in California. Those are huge, 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 huge trees. And, you know, someone was saying maybe the reason there are so many earthquakes around that time is because they were chopping so many of these huge trees down in that area. And, you know, what, and what were they being used for? They were being used to make, uh, you know, carts and, and carve out and make uh, structures in the mines. Why were they mining gold? I think it's more than just a precious metal that's going to be, you know, traded for shekels. I think there's an energetic quality to all of this that they are literally hoarding because they are parasites and vampires. <laughs> so um, also, I think that's why Jews are so obsessed with diamonds. I think it has something to do with an energetic property and not so much just about the shekels that they'll get. I really think there's something big here. So just looking at some of my notes here. I'm going to read to you guys a little bit. The conception of the tree rising through a number of worlds is found in northern Eurasia and forms part of the shamanic lore shared by many peoples of this region. This seems to be a very ancient conception, perhaps based on the pole star, the center of the heavens, and the image of the central tree in Scandinavia may have been influenced by it. Among Siberian shamans, a central tree may be used as a ladder to ascend to the heavens. I mean, we see... We see images like this all the time with our lore, like I said before, Yggdrasil, Midgard, you know. Um, we also have the pillars of the earth. What if two of these trees were uh, pillars holding up Midgard or, you know, who knows? Um, we'll get to that a little bit later, though, about the pillars, just some ideas that we've been having. Interesting, too, how you have the Israelis, right, the Jews going in and uprooting all of the olive trees in Palestine, the olive groves. I think it's more than just a, you know, a big F you to their little prisoners there. I think there's something big about chopping down trees. And also, you know, I have this person that trolls me. I'm sure you guys, they troll a volley on too. Grove clearing. Interesting. I think their, I think their channel got showed because people reported the BS that they were posting. But um, grove clearing. They, they knocked down our sacred groves. They, they cleared our sacred groves. They, they chopped down our sacred trees. And I just think that's funny. It's probably some Jew in Tel Aviv like, let's call our name Grove Clearing because fuck those pagans. <laughs> fuck those white people. We chop down their trees. We are all on the wrong page. Remember the monoatomic properties of Ormus. It is in everything and a part of everything. When heat is applied to it, its chemical components structure changes. It can become not only precious metals, but invisible. So there's a frequency shift going on as well. Its mass also changes from negative to positive. But what about extremes of heat? Is it possible that this can lock into it the substance we now call stone once cooled? Clearly the giant's causeway and devil's tower is not magma flow as they've tried saying it is. And I've been to the giant's causeway as a child and I remember thinking to myself, how is this perfect thing formed just randomly? This makes no sense. Giants causeway? Hmm? Either we or pre-civilizations separated all these minerals and carted them off beyond what we know as our borders. The scale of this is staggering. A thought keeps popping into my head. Spoils of war. If you're born in a land, the last thing you do is destroy your own land. Now, if you're on the victor side, sent to take charge of the remaining populace, you don't give a shit about their land or their people. Meet the illuminated ones. Our history is so confused. We have been lied to so much. Okay, look at the Mona Lisa painting ASAP with regards to Earth being a landfill. It will make you think about her fake smile a little deeper after you notice what's behind her. The more the truth is exposed, the more the truth begins to look like the Lord of the Rings. Lies in the serious media and the truth in fiction. This is in alignment with the satanic spiritual rule of inverting everything. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call it satanic. Um, I would call it, I don't know, dark, Semitic, Abrahamic, I don't know. But Satanism and the word satanic has been corrupted as well. Maybe we'll talk about that in future videos. I'm sure, I'm triggering a lot of Christians right now by saying that. Okay, so... Maybe when the earth was full of these several mile high trees, lightning was something that didn't exist since these trees 
would have been regulating the ionosphere. The lightning could just be a side effect of the trees not existing to serve this function. Also, if the ground stays more charged to this way, then plants would grow better, faster, stronger, and uh, plants do respond to electrical stimuli. So they know the true origins of what this place is, you know, and what we're told it is. I think there's a lot more uh, land than we're, than we're told. I think we're literally kept in a box. This is why they burned the libraries, you know, the library of Alexandria. This is why they destroyed all his knowledge. Keep us in the dark. Keep us freaking, you know, just completely disconnected from what this used to be. Yggdrasil is an immense mythical tree that connects the nine worlds in Norse cosmology. In both sources, Yggdrasil is an immense ash tree that is central and considered very holy. The gods go to Yggdrasil daily to assemble at their things. The branches of Yggdrasil extend far into the heavens. Think about your average city, right? What are, what are those? They're skyscrapers, right? They seem to be kind of artificial trees. <laughs> and they're ugly as freaking hell. They're ugly as hell. And, you know, we do like the feeling of being up high. I think that, um, you know, attracts a lot of people to high finance, right? They want to be at the top of the world looking down on everybody. That's maybe a natural thing that we're drawn to, you know, because maybe, maybe we used to be able to ascend to these levels and these cool trees. <laughs> also think about some of the, you know, the, the folk tales, Jack and the Beanstalk, right? And he goes up to the giants in the sky. Um, now just think about who are the big, uh, skyscraper builders, right? The Silversteins, right? The Jews, Trump, Trump Towers. They are the ones that, you know, these elites, elites, the rulers, they're not elite, but they are ruling us at this moment. They're knowledgeable about how these, all of our, how all of our trees were chopped down and, and they were the ones that probably did it and are now rebuilding this world with their disgusting trees, their skyscrapers. Interesting too, Trump got an award um, from a bunch of Jews and it was called <laughs> the Tree of Life. Let me play the clip for you. These awards are given to me by the Jewish community for different things. And this is the Tree of Life, which is a very big award in terms of everything that I stand for. Also, you know, going back to uh, the, the earthquakes in San Francisco and the chopping down of the sequoias, well, here's an interesting little factoid. San Francisco, in 2001, the San Francisco city population was 776,733, with the Jewish population 49,500, and additional 160,000 Jews lived in the surrounding area. Jews caused the earthquakes. <laughs> but think about it. Who was... Who owned the gold mines? Who made them chop down the timber? Who made them go get the gold? Why were they getting the gold? Not just to make shiny, pretty little rings for the Goyam. There's something more to it. So just a little bit about the, uh, the redwood forest, right? In 1850, old growth redwood forest covered more than 2 million acres of the California coast. The northern portion of that area, originally inhabited by Native Americans, uh, attracted many lumbermen and others turned gold miners when a minor gold rush brought them to the region. Failing in efforts to strike rich in gold, these men turned toward harvesting the giant trees for booming development in San Francisco and other places on the West Coast. Interesting thing that uh, my friend brought up too is maybe the gold and the other metals are the bioproducts of those silicone trees. I also find it really interesting that Steven Spielberg uses this in his film. This is Devil's Tower in Wyoming, Devil's Tower, um, on a volcanic butte or a giant sawn off tree stump. And uh, what was Steven Spielberg suggesting when he chose this as the location for a close encounter with an alien race? Hmm. I wonder. <laughs> Hello? Like, freaking throwing it in our faces as usual. Think about the Kabbalah, too, right? the tree of life, you know? They know, I think they're throwing it in our faces. So maybe the reason Jews are destroying this planet is because they're literally mining it <laughs> for, I don't know, is it for their little, what, I mean, there's a whole underground world as well. And this isn't just like, hello earth, stupid kooky stuff that you all think I love. No, there are freaking underground cities, they exist. They're out in the freaking open. And these, these freaking 
rats that rule us right now. They build underground tunnel systems and underground bunkers and underground cities all the time. So what if these fuckers don't even live here? Maybe that's why they're spraying the shit out of us every single day because they're underground and they don't get affected by it. I don't know. I don't know. It's very strange. But it's all starting to make a little bit more sense to me, at least. Maybe it is for you, too. Maybe you're more confused now. I don't know. Whatever. I like talking about these things because, I don't know, I think, I think there is so much we've been lied to about. So one of the places we were thinking could have been one of the two huge pillar trees, you know, we're just kind of going with this right now. Let's just, let's go. Uh, maybe it was Uyuni Salar in Bolivia. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen this before, and uh, very interesting, again, we see the hexagons, again. Totally random, right? That must have been some random, crazy stuff that made those perfect hexagons, yeah. And then maybe we're thinking somewhere in Sh Mount Shasta. Now they're building their own tree of life to replace the one or the ones that they destroyed. Get that stuff away from me because I don't want these disgusting skyscrapers. I don't want any of that. I don't want all this death. I don't want all this worship of crap. No. No. And I think we have to connect to our past, our true past, to even understand how we fight our enemy. Because this goes back long before immigration problems and long before chemtrails and long before racial tensions. Like, this goes back far. And like I said before, our timeline of history is completely BS. I think we all know that by now. So, all right, I'll leave it at that, you know, before we go off too much into cuckoo land. But uh, check out the video. Have an open mind. Like I said, if you can't understand his thick Russian accent, there's subtitles, and I'll link that as well. So, all right. Bye-bye.